Come on guys, you've seen this one coming for a while, right? International cinema has an important role in all genres, particularly horror, and the fact that we can bear witness to the cautionary tales of many different cultures is tantamount to being a horror fan. Well, if you haven't yet noticed, I'm British, and I'm a big advocate of the uniquely bleak style of filmmaking that we've managed to master. I guess it must have something to do with the weather. Hello horror fans, what's going on and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. As per usual, I'll be your horror host Jack Finch as we curiously take a look at the top 5 most terrifying British horror movies. Roll the clip. For the curious amongst you, of course, that clip was from 2004's incredible horror comedy, Shaun of the Dead, written and directed by Simon Pegg and Edgar Wright. And while it doesn't make our list, because, come on, this list is for terrifying movies only, it still deserves an honourable mention for being one of the most iconic British movies ever made. Kicking off at number 5, 28 Days Later, 2002. And the fact that we haven't yet spoken about 28 Days Later on this channel is a bit of a shocker. I'm shocked, but there's no time like the present. Written by Alex Garland and directed by the legendary author Danny Boyle, 28 Days Later was the film that was responsible for reigniting a frenzied thirst for the somewhat stale and overplayed zombie genre. This time though, we weren't inundated by an ancient curse that ravaged the living dead, but instead a very physical, highly contagious virus that didn't turn its victims into shambling, half-chewed corpses, but angry, rage-ridden man-eaters. 28 Days Later was terrifying because it's the definition of blood and guts. The first time I saw this film, I was awestruck by its cinematic beauty. Despite the fact that it depicts a post-apocalyptic Britain, it manages to successfully layer itself with a level of isolation not always captured within the zombie genre. The London wasteland scene of 28 Days Later is a masterclass in creating atmosphere and building tension, pinned up by the incredible musical score by John Murphy. It also stars my guy Killian Murphy, alongside Naomi Harris, the formidable Brendan Gleeson, and of course Christopher Eccleston before he became Doctor Who. If you want to understand British horror, watch 28 Days Later because it truly sets the benchmark. Swinging in at number 4, The Descent, 2005. Ah, yeah, sorry about that one. Gets me every time. Now, there's just something about The Descent that I can't quite put my finger on. On paper, it should be somewhat of a middle of the pack standard genre horror with a relatively unknown cast and director Neil Marshall coming off the back of his directorial debut with Dog Soldiers, which, don't get me wrong, is an incredible horror film in its own right, but it just kind of doesn't make sense that The Descent is so good. And yeah, the unknown cast kind of had its pitfalls because there are patches where the acting is cringe at best, but I think that's exactly where it lies. The Descent wouldn't be The Descent if we had someone like Kira Knightley running around with a headlamp screaming her lungs out. The Descent works because it's so raw. It's rough around the edges, it's dark in all the right places, pitch black in some cases, but it has a charm to it that actually makes us care about the survivors of this film. Even with its oftentimes ham-fisted flashback narrative, we still manage to care about the fact that Juno and Sarah obviously have some issues to sort out, all the while trapped in an ancient Appalachian cave system. Oh, and it's full of terrifying subterranean humanoids. I know it's high praise, but The Descent is to caving as Jaws is to sharks. It's an experience, to say the least, and Neil Marshall does an incredible job of drip-feeding his tension before turning the tap to a full-on raging torrent of non-stop fear and despair. It's great stuff. And also, the UK ending of this film compared to the US ending pretty much sums up British filmmaking. Not a lot of happy endings. Coming in at number three, Dead Man's Shoes, 2004. Alright guys, I'll let you into a little secret. My favourite director of all time is a guy named Shane Meadows, who made a film called This Is England, which I believe is one of the most important films in British culture, as well as the TV series that followed it. But before that, he made this, Dead Man's Shoes, and it is 
awesome. Although some may argue that this isn't exactly a horror film in the conventional sense, thankfully for us, Meadows is a wonderfully unique director that expertly blends genres and conventions in a particularly British manner. Dead Man's Shoes first and foremost is a revenge film, but it exemplifies the horrors that are found at a social level and the relationships that define us from our families to the ones that have wronged us. It stars Paddy Considine, one of the most underrated actors in British cinema, as a man named Richard, an ex-paratrooper in the British Army that returns to his small town home of Matlock, Derbyshire, where he has a few scores to settle for his younger brother, Anthony. I'll avoid talking any more about the plot because Dead Man's Shoes is a real seat of your pants roller coaster, but what you'll experience is a completely British horror story that sticks out like a sore thumb, and I mean that in the highest regard. Next up at number two, The Wicker Man, 1973. They do not lie awake in the dark and weep for their sins. They do not make me sick discussing their duty to God. Well, I feel like I've harped on far too much about the merits of 1973's The Wicker Man and the wider impact that it's had on British cinema and the horror genre as a whole. But the fact of the matter is, we can't have a British horror movies list without acknowledging Robin Hardy and Anthony Schaefer's terrifying, ritualistic Celtic cautionary tale. And the truth is, there hasn't really been a film quite like The Wicker Man ever since its release. And yes, despite its name, I'm including the 2006 remake because that is not a horror film, it's a comedy. However, there may be something recently in the pipe pipeline, Midsummer, which is set to be released in August from Ari Aster, the director of the incredible 2018 horror showstopper, Hereditary. So keep your eyes peeled. Hey, maybe British horror conventions are beginning to get picked up into the mainstream, and here it's perhaps important to talk about folk horror, because The Wicker Man served as one of the inspirations for an incredibly important subgenre of British horror cinema. The so-called British folk revival has slowly been making headway with directors such as Ben Wheatley and Peter Strickland, but before that it was encapsulated under the banner of the so-called called Unholy Trinity. Three widely important British counterculture films, 1968's Witchfinder General, 1973's Blood on Satan's Claw, and of course, The Wicker Man. All three of which point to the fact that there may be something a little sinister lurking within Britain's green and pleasant lands. Hey, that's four films in one point, I'm keeping it real. And finally, our number one spot, Threads, 1984. <laughs> Alright guys, a little heads up, but this film really isn't for the faint of heart. In fact, it's so impactful that it should probably be shown to every world leader across the planet to warn about the dangers of a thermonuclear war. That's a pretty heavy theme for any horror film, right? But like many of the entries on this list, again, this isn't a horror film in the conventional sense, but instead a genre-defying plunge into what makes British cinema so unique. Threads, written by Barry Hines and directed by Mick Jackson, is a British apocalyptic war drama documenting the account of a nuclear attack and the effects it had on the northern English city of Sheffield. It's equal parts documentary and equal parts atmospheric anxiety inducing full frontal horror. You'll have to double check that it's fiction at a few points as well. In actual fact, Thread shouldn't really be making this list. It was commissioned by the BBC as a one-off television film that wasn't marketed or even conventionally published, and no one really saw it coming, much like the subject matter which it tackles. But despite that, Threads is an unforgettable experience. It never once distances the viewer, and in that sense, it never once lets us come up for air, staring us in the face the whole time, leaving nothing to our imagination. It is equal parts a wide-eyed horror film, as it is equal parts a history lesson, and a history that hopefully we'll never experience. Threads, man. Trust me. It's bleak. It's really, really bleak. Well, there we have it, horror fans. My list for the top five most terrifying British horror movies. What about your picks? Why don't you let us know your thoughts in the comment box down below. Before we depart, though, I'd just like to personally give a huge thank you to all of you horror fans out there, new and old, recent subscribers, or long-time lurkers. Really, guys, it's been a pleasure lately to see how this channel is growing, and we'll do our best to keep dishing out some authentically awesome horror content, as long as you guys keep being equally awesome horror fans. Yeah. In other words, thank you. On that emotional note, that's all we've got time for in today's video. Just stick around all the way until the end. If you're a fan of this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button, as well as that subscribe button, and we'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch. You've been watching top five scary videos. Until next time, you take it easy.